Welcome to the Chem Doctor. And uh, I actually had a request from a viewer to do uh, a video on uh, aldol condensations, and so um, this is my response to that to that request. Now, um, I I was actually asked to do um, a couple of different reactions. I'm going to start with the aldol condensation, but what the viewer needs to realize is that the aldol condensation is actually a combination of two kinds of reactions. The first the the first is what's called the aldol addition and and if this reaction is carried out in sodium hydroxide and the reaction is heated then what ends up happening is you uh, you end up eliminating water and forming what's called an enol so for me to deal with that I really need to produce two videos in the first video I'm going to talk about the aldol addition, which is the first part of the aldol condensation reaction, and make sure that we're on the same page. And then in the second video, what we'll do is we'll extend the aldol addition into the aldol condensation. Now, it's important to the viewer going into this to, to understand some definitions. The first thing is, is that in my example here, we're, we're, we're going to be um, looking at, at the reaction between... Uh, two identical molecules that happen to be an aldehyde where the central um, the central functional group of this is called a carbonyl that's this section in here all right and what's important to understand about the carbonyl is that it's that that it's a very polar functional group the oxygen uh, is is electronegative by by contrast to the carbon and the fact that the, the oxygen is sp2 hybridized actually enhances the electronegativity so the oxygen has a partial negative charge on it the carbon has a partial positive charge on it so what that means is that if you combine this molecule either with itself or with other molecules that are also polarized and you combine these molecules uh, with a nucleophile um, like we are here in the case of, of utilizing sodium hydroxide in the reaction. Remember that hydroxide is a relatively strong base by, by co comparison to water. So the hydroxide in this case is going to be operating as a nucleophile. All right, and, nu whoops, and nucleophiles by definition will interact with electrophiles because electrophiles have positive charges on them and there's a natural tendency in nature for things that have negative charges on them to be attracted to things that have positive charges on them so the the, the nucleophile hydroxide is going to have a natural attraction to the carbonyl carbon here all right now um, th there's a couple things I want to say about these kinds of addition reactions and, I, and I've given you the definition of an addition reaction all right so an addition reaction involves the reaction between two molecules a new bond is going to be formed between them and one of the importances of the aldol addition is the fact that you're generating a new carbon-carbon bond and the outcome of this is called an aldol because you're producing a molecule that that has two functional groups in it it has an aldehyde functional group which is here and the uh, and it also contains an alcohol group which is shown here the the product is called a, a beta hydroxycarbonyl um, molecule because it has a hydroxyl group that is at the beta position and uh, and a carbonyl group which which is uh, in the molecule as a result of the interaction between uh, the two reactants All right so let's go ahead and take a look at the mechanism for this so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, one of our reactant molecules and I'm going to expand the structure and for this video I'm deliberately not using line structures because I, I want to make sure that that the viewer uh, understands exactly what's going on so I'm going to go ahead and put all the hydrogens in and on the left side of this molecule we have a methyl group and then we have the carbon carbon bond going to the carbonyl all right and we have our double bond to the oxygen and two unshared pairs of electrons on the oxygen and then this is an aldehyde so here's the hydrogen alright now in the first step of this reaction okay well well, let me back up because I did talk about the fact that the hydrox the hydroxide here is operating as a nucleophile and it's gonna have an attraction for the carbonyl carbon but it also is gonna have a, an attraction for other 
elements that are in this molecule that also have partial positive ch charges on them. So remember the fact that, that this oxygen is electron withdrawing, right? Because it has a, a higher electro electronegativity than the carbon. So we're going to see partial positive charges that will exist on the carbon, on this carbon, and also on these hydrogens. All right, and the fact that these hydrogens have partial positive charges on them means that that they are going to be acidic, which means that they can operate like like a classic Bronsted acid, where the the proton can be donated um, to something that is in solution that can accept that proton. So in the in the first step of the aldol addition, we're going to have our hy hydrox our hydroxide, which is going to make a nucleophilic attack, all right, on the hydrogen here, all right, so it's going to extract this hydrogen, and this set of electrons here is going to shift into this position, all right, and the result is going to be this set of electrons is going to move up onto the carbonyl oxygen. The result is, is that we're going to form this thing that's called the enolate ion. All right, and so this is going to be composed of, uh, of actually two intermediates that are related. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and draw them both. So based on what I just described here, let's start with that molecule. So we're going to have something that's going to look like this. All right, and we're going to have a double bond to the carbonyl carbon. And our oxygen here, which was an sp2 hybridized oxygen before, is now sp3. It has a negative charge on it. All right, and then I, I don't want to forget here, this, here's our aldehyde hydrogen. And this molecule is going to be basically in equilibrium with another molecule. I'm going to change my color so it's clear. All right, because this set of electrons, these are resonance structures, this set of electrons can move back in. And when it does, the pi electrons here are going to move out onto this carbon. The, the result is, is that the other intermediate here, uh, which is a resonance structure, is going to look like this. So we're going to have a set of electrons here. Here's our two hydrogens. All right, car our carbonyl carbon, the double bond is back. And I don't want to forget my aldehyde uh, hydrogen. All right, and I'm going to put a bracket around this because these are resonance structures. Resonance structures, um, some, some of your organic professors are going to call these resonance contributors. Uh, resonance structures. All right, and remember that over here that we produced a water molecule when the hydroxide came in and abstracted the hydrogen. All right, now coming back to this, the notable thing here, the thing you need to realize about it is that, uh, and, and this issue exists for both of these structures, right? This is, this, this, these two structures are related by resonance. This carbon right here is now been converted into a nucleophile. All right, and technically speaking, uh, we could call this a carbanion. All right, it has car carbanionic characteristics to it because this set of electrons, even though it's delocalized due to the resonance structures here, um, make this carbon nucleophilic because this pair of electrons is available to make a bond. All right, so what's going to happen in this next stage then, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this thing now out of my bracket. So I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to rewrite this. All right, and I'm going to take the molecule and turn it around. All right, so here's the carbonyl uh, carbon and the oxygen again with our electrons. And then here's our carba carbon ionic carbon, our carbon ion, carbon ion. All right, and this thing has a net negative charge on it. 
All right, and then uh, what I'm going to do is put another molecule next door to this, right? Because if you look back at my original um, reaction up here, we've got two of these things, all right? And remember what I said about this. Um, because the oxygen is electronegative, the oxygen is partially negatively charged and the carbon is partially positive charged. So now what's going to happen is this set of electrons is going to make a nucleophilic attack on the electrophilic carbon that is the carbonyl carbon. And this set of electrons is going to move up onto the oxygen. All right, and this is how we're going to end up with our new carbon-carbon bond. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to draw that the uh, the new molecule. So here's the aldehyde functional group, and I'm going to just put my two hydrogens just to be abundantly clear above and below this carbon. All right, so this that's this hydrogen and this one. All right, and I don't want to leave the dots because that might lead you to think that those were electrons and they're not. All right, I'm just trying to make the point. That's these two hydrogens. All right, and then here's the new bond. Here's the carbonyl carbon. Now our oxygen is here. It has that set of electrons on it, and here's the terminal uh, methyl group. All right, now, we have in this reaction, and like I said at the beginning of the video, these are um, reactions are usually done under mild conditions. So the hydroxide is in here, also in the presence of liquid water. All right, so we have a water molecule here. I want to change the color again, which is making collisions with uh, the uh, intermediates of this reaction. And the water can now act like an acid. So a set of electrons here will take a proton off of the water molecule. And we're going to generate a molecule of hydroxide again. And the end result is going to be our beta hydroxycarbonyl. All right, I'm going to go ahead and redraw it. Whoops. All right, and the two hydrogens. I'm sorry about the artwork. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world. All right, now. Okay. So if we look at our molecule, remember the designations, and, and I'm making some assumptions here that you guys have done the reading and stuff that you need to um, to understand this terminology. But this carbon right here originally was my alpha carbon, and, uh, and the hydroxyl group is now on the beta position. Okay, so... We have produced a new molecule here that uh, has both the aldehyde functional group and the hydroxy or the hydroxyl functional group in it. And in the next video, we're going to talk about what happens to this. Because if, under the conditions I just described here, that you add heat to this situation, then we can have an elimination reaction that, that occurs with this molecule that's going to result in the formation of a double bond. All right, so with that, what, I, what I'm going to do is go ahead and close the video. I want to um, thank the viewer for taking the time to, to watch my video. And make sure to watch uh, video number two that will um, take us through the rest of this process uh, so that I hope that you may understand uh, technically what an aldol condensation is. All right, thank you very much for watching.